Hey, uh, some of you, I think, know who uh, Paul Bradley is. You know Paul, you recognize Paul from uh, the, our stuff and being here at times, but I don't know if you know Sandra. Paul's married to Sandra. Paul's been a part of our church, Paul and Sandra, for years and years. Um, they don't uh, come very often because of the commute. They live in Thailand, where uh, Paul works with Cadence Ministries and also a group called Free Burma Rangers. So they're uh, mission partners with us. So I asked Paul if he'd say a little bit about what he's been doing, Sandra too, if you want, and then uh, have Paul lead us in prayer, and then we'll pray for them and pray about uh, whatever, okay? So... Paul? Great, thanks. Away. Do you want to do the kid? Do you want to stand next to each other? Because you, I don't want to come between you two. Especially today. That'd be wrong. <laughs> I'll give you the quick 30-second um, update. So this is the first summer that we've done our kind of our summer tour without any of our kids because our youngest is um, going to be a senior in high school. So we're approaching the empty nest, which is kind of both fun and a little bit scary. Um, <clears throat> so this last year, um, uh, I, w I worked part-time at the Christian International School um, for Missionary Kids in Chiang Mai, and this next year I'm going to get to work full-time there. So that's kind of one of the benefits of our kids growing up and moving on. And so, um, yeah, we're enjoying that phase. All right. And I was just here like a year ago. Um, and so, or October it was, and I gave a, kind of a report. But since then, I've kind of been back to Syria for another trip. I wasn't going to go, and then our team leader um, asked, us, asked me if I could go because we needed some extra help. And so it was kind of a whirlwind trip, this last trip to Syria. So this is my second trip to Syria now. And that place is, uh, I just let you know, I'll just focus on that for, um, this morning, is um, there's eight factions that are, are kind of vying for power there. And it's a powder keg ready to go off. And the only reason it hasn't gone off is because the U.S. military is still involved, kind of holding Turkey back, which is a NATO ally that we shouldn't be fighting, but they are fighting against these other guys. And they're supporting these other ISIS guys who took off their uniforms and are using them as a proxy army to fight the YPG. So if you get confused, me too. Um, it's a really dangerous place to go to. And so we're not even sure who the good guys are. Somebody asked me um, yesterday, because uh, I was ex trying to explain this, they go, well, there, are there any good guys? And I, I, I said, no. I mean, it's degrees of bad, basically. But we choose to go with an organization called the YPG, who are Kurdish by, um, by uh, culture and background um, because they've given us access to the people. So we're not working with any militaries in Syria because it's just there's so much bad stuff going on um, where we do do that in other places in Iraq with we, and, and in Kurdistan. So we've just been focusing on working with children's and fa children's, children's, that's great English, children and uh, families in IDP camps, which is internally displaced people, um, six million internally displaced people in Syria right now, which means they're, out, they're still in their own country, but they're separated from their original homes. Six million. And so we're just trying to help people um, with help, hope, and love, doing practical things. Um, there's a program right here in Raqqa. Uh, that was just three weeks ago. Um, and in Raqqa, you can see the buildings in the background. That, that was ground zero for ISIS. That was the headquarters where it all started. Um, and then the coalition forces bombed bombed them into submission, basically, and you can imagine what the city looks like. It's just a rubble pile, um, but lots of families still living there, and so we put in a playground um, that you saw in the foreground behind the buildings, put playgrounds, did children's programs, doing medical care, and then, um, yeah, that's a great situation right there. People are living in bombed out buildings, so several floors will be bombed out, but then you'll see people just living in these things. Uh, I'll tell you one last story, and I'll be done, I swear. Um, you shouldn't swear. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Uh, well, no, you can. I missed that sermon, yeah, right? Claim the oath of God. I can. Here. Thank I you. I know you're referring to communion. Thank so you. I am. Good. You're right. <laughs> so I wanted to show this picture. I wanted you just to focus on the face of this woman, and I feel like the face of this woman is the is is the characterizes how people feel in in Syria right now. We were. This is a border. This is a front line position, kind of a no man's land. Um, between the YPG and the, the faction that's called the FSA, Free Syrian Army, that's being supported by 
uh, Turkey, and these are former ISIS guys, okay? And this is a village we did a children's program in, but all along this bridge is a, uh, they kind of allow commerce to go back and forth, but tons of people got caught on the other side um, when the Free Syrian Army came in here. And so this YPG soldier um, arranged to have his family um, uh, uh, let across. So this is, I caught, we just happened to be there at the moment when um, this lady, I don't even know what relation she is to him, um, but I wish I had a video of it. Um, it I've never seen such a mm, emotional uh, expression of liberation and joy mixed in with just, you know, salvation in this lady's face. And I just broke down crying just watching the whole scene. But this is the anguish that these people are all in. They're all afraid. They don't know who good people are. They don't know. Um, so in the midst of this darkness and this shadow, right, there's a huge shadow on everything. When you shine a light on those things, these people have been really receptive to that, and they just love us, even though they're afraid of uh, the fact that we're Christians. They still will embrace that kind of stuff because the light in love is stronger than fear and evil. So thanks for supporting us, and um, keep praying for Syria. It's a mess there. All right, well, let's pray, um, and maybe you can start us off, Paul, just leading us in prayer for Syria, and then I'll uh, pray for you, and we'll open it up, and you'll stand here feeling awkward and everything, but Jesus loves you. Thanks. Right. So, Father God, um, first of all, we just want to confess that we need your help, and you are our helper, and um, we want to live that out. So, God, we put ourselves before you and ask for your help. Um, especially when we look at situations um, that seem uh, just insurmountable and impossible, like in Syria. And so I pray in the darkness that's there, the shadow that's there, the evil that's there, the confusion, um, the war, uh, the hatred, all of those things, um, that you would shine your light and that people in that fierce landscape would be able to see your light and see your truth and be open to you, realizing the brokenness of the pursuit of their Islamic uh, religion to, for their own salvation. And so, Jesus, be the light, be the truth in those people and help us, help us to help them, help us to be a light in those places, to not be led by, by comfort or fear um, and to go in with courage sharing your gospel. Father, thank you so much for Paul and for Sandra. And thank you that uh, through them, light shines in the darkness. And thank you, Lord God, that the darkness cannot comprehend the light or overcome it. God, I don't know the political solution to the problems in Syria uh, or in Burma or anywhere in the world because I don't think there are any political solutions. God, I also don't think there are any religious solutions in the sense of organizations and human striving and programs. Uh, you're the solution and you show up in Paul and Sandra. And so God, we bless them and we thank you that we get to be a part of what they're doing. And Lord, I pray that uh, as they um, are your presence to other people, that they would see you in those people and you would be more and more present to them. God, we claim the blood of your covenant over Paul and Sandra. We stand with them as part of our church and we bless them in, in Jesus' name.